Hello, friends. He's the Gay Advice Fairy. Welcome back. I'm the Gay Advice Fairy, otherwise known as the Mo in the Mask. Let's get right into it. Dear Gay Advice Fairy, I'm a gay woman. I'm 20 years old and I work at a thrift store. The other day I had a customer come up to me and start telling me I'm pretty and that a girl like me should have a boyfriend. How can I best passively aggressively tell him to fuck right off? Thanks in advance. Creeped out chick. Well, creeped out chick, there are several ways you can handle this. One, the Brenda Lee Johnson. Thank you so much. Two, the I've already got a boyfriend technique. Thank you, I already have one. And if you're willing to risk it, there's 2B, which is the coming out technique. Thanks, but I already have a girlfriend, so. And three, just a simple thank you. Thanks. Four, know your options. Make sure that especially in retail, you have a conversation with your superiors about what to do in case of a harassing customer. Sometimes you can avoid them by going into the back of the store or speaking to a manager or getting a coworker to take care of them. But know what your options are and know how to handle that situation in advance. First and foremost, though, is politeness. You are in a retail situation, so unless they cross a certain line, you're going to need to be polite, or at least seem to be polite. I hope that helps. Let's look at the next question. Dear Gay Advice Fairy, I've been single for three years now, and it's getting pretty old. I'd love to find a partner again, but I don't really know how to meet people in a way that's comfortable to me. My last relationship was terrible, and I'm scared of getting hurt or hurting someone else. I'm not sure where I should even start. Sincerely, Lost. Well lost. As far as I'm concerned, there are three main ways you can meet someone. One, meeting people face to face. Sometimes it's simple as joining uh, book clubs, hiking clubs, or some sort of other group activity that can uh, give you a link to someone. At the gym, at the grocery store, there are people out there who you might just run into and sometimes it's worth just striking up a conversation. It depends on where you are and the circumstances, but first-hand meetings are generally a pretty, uh, pretty good source of meeting new people. Two, second-hand meetings. Sometimes your friends know better than you would who you'll get along with. Don't be afraid to ask your friends to set you up with someone they might know. True, blind dates aren't always the best, but you never know. And it's a great way to have something in common with someone already. Three, what I, what I call third-hand or third-party meetings. Now these include dating sites, dating services, or uh, those speed dating places. Granted, different services have different levels of success, and even the most successful ones won't always work for you. But they're a great source for meeting people who you wouldn't meet otherwise, and you might be surprised by who's out there. Ultimately, the best thing you can do is be open. There's no guaranteed way of meeting someone you'll fall in love with or have a relationship with. Even the services you have to pay for aren't guaranteed. It's just important to be open, be aware of your surroundings, and not being afraid to make that first step and take a little bit of a risk. Hope that helped. Now it's time for Comment Closet. Hi, welcome to the Comment Closet, where I respond to all of your lovely messages and comments. Today we have a message from Megan, who writes, So my son and three of his friends were discussing relationships and love. The bottom line they decided was that it did not matter if you were gay, straight, or undecided. That love between two people was cool. They said, love is love. It's hard to find someone who will love you for who you are nowadays. So what difference does their sex make? This point was made by a group of nine-year-olds. I wanted you to know that I was so proud of these kids and their open minds that I posted it on Facebook and the backlash was ridiculous. I was scorned for praising them and being proud. Anyways, I feel like there is hope for understanding in the next generation. I teach my children that they are to love life and accept people for who they are, regardless of their color, income, religion, sex, or sexual orientation. If people don't like it, too bad. Thank you so much for your message, Meg. It really meant a lot to hear a hopeful message about the millennials, especially in light of certain publications denouncing and decrying or many of the stuff imposed on it by the previous one. Anyway, it really warms my heart to hear a parenting like yours. You. Keeps up the good work, Meg. Thanks a lot. Finally, it's time for our awesome and awkward moment of the week. 
Last week on Dancing with the Stars, Alexandra and Mark performed the first ever Afro jazz routine of the entire series. And normally it would be very exciting to see something new, but these are the costumes they decided to wear. Awkward. This past week also saw the International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia, and many international organizations participated, including the United States State Department, which flew rainbow flags over many of the embassies across the world. Even the UN got in on the act, producing this wonderful video, which you should definitely check out. Awesome. That's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I'm the Gay Advice Fairy, otherwise known as the Mo in the Mask. If you'd like your questions answered next week, please hit me up on Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. I put out new videos every Monday and Friday, so be sure to subscribe for great advice and other things nice. See you on Friday.